Hi, it's Pat Hood from Passions of Pastimes, and I'm back with the next third, approximately, of this jewelry jar. I've taken out a big pile of stuff and uh, just put it off to the side here. I can't wait to get into it. And here's a, there is a, a this really nice sort of painted necklace that I saw from the outside of the jar. So that's a, a good thing to start off with. Hope you're having a great day. This is gold, paint, blue, cream, and this lovely orange. It's a nice lightweight wooden um, piece. See the wood texture on the back there? Um, wooden beads, seed beads, more wooden beads. Very nice. A nice little uh, hook and uh, number eight clasp. I don't think it's any precious metal, but that's a very nice necklace in very good shape. And uh, I think that could be um, re-gifted to the, uh, the group that provides jewelry in a long-term care home. Just have to clean it up, give it a good wash. That's kind of nice. I'm going to put it back here for sure. We can leave, leave it to focus on while we try to sort something else out. Now this, this is, I don't know if it says something on the back here. Looks like it might. This, this is one of those things I guess you put a scarf through. It's plastic. It's kind of, it's too plastic to be nice. <laughs> but let me just quickly look at the other side here. Oh, okay. So, made in Taiwan is, what, is all it says. So, that goes with the, the kids' dress-up toys. That's about all I can say for that. Ooh, I'm finding some individual earrings. I'm going to try to put those off to the side. Um, here is a nice bangle. It is a purpley blue. It's looking even bluer on the... It's looking blue on the camera. A little more... What do you call that color? Maybe indigo? Um, I think that's a plastic. Uh, very nice shape. I don't. I don't think it's anything uh, precious. It's not the kind of color you would see for Bakelite, um, but a very wearable bracelet. Very nice. A lot of blue stuff in here. Uh, this is interesting. As soon as I saw it, I thought, "Oh, it's the key to my heart." It's um. It's also tangled. So let me quickly try to separate these two items. This, this uh, chain is kind of grimy. I, it just it needs a good clean and I think sometimes that that griminess, it almost feels like oiliness interferes with getting things untangled. So let's try this way. Let's, it's not really the brute force approach. It's more the, let's take the thin thing out of the thick thing. If we can. Yay. All right. So this one is where we started. It's sort of a locket. And I guess you could put photos in there. It's got a, I think that's, a nice snap shut item and a nice key on a reasonably substantial chain. What we got a knot in it. We've got a oh I see. The the the, the chain is just uh, not attached properly. There we go. We just have to there we go. So take the knot out, put the chain on correctly, give it a wash. Somebody can put their sweetheart's picture in there. And uh, oh, as long as it stayed shut, I noticed it fell open again. Now it doesn't want to stay shut. Maybe it needs a, a little magnet or something. I might, I, I might, uh, 
I might have to put my hubby or my grandson to work figuring if they could get it to stay shut. Otherwise, if you know, there's nothing wrong with gluing it shut and saying it's not a lock. <laughs> All right, so that's not the best piece, but it's it's workable. Here's a belt buckle. I guess what do you do? Sew a piece of material around one side and I'm not sure how these work. Like, I mean, obviously this is meant to go through some riveted holes, but how do you make it into a belt from here? Just sew a piece around. One belt buckle. Don't know what to do with. <coughs> I said that I saw a couple of these. Hey, look, I have a finial for a lamp. Anybody missing a finial? There's one. I suppose you could do something with a wind chime with it, or this way. If you got hit with it, that 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 would hurt. You heard my knuckle there, right? That would hurt. All right, let's put that in the pile of metal. Um, oh, whoa! I didn't even realize that was over there. Look at the sparkle on this thing. Wow. It's a, a clamper bracelet. It... It's nicely put together. It's got great shine. It's got a ton and a half of rhinestones. Um, they feel like glass. There's one missing there. There's one missing there. This is maybe just needs a polish. I don't think it's scratched. Um, I don't see any maker's name. Oh, but that would be so much fun. New Year's Eve, you know, when all those disco dancing lights are flashing around, you could flash your bracelet as well. It, oh, look, it's making sparkles on the on the wall. You have your own disco bracelet. That's kind of cool. There you can see them. Put my camera up. <laughs> Put them down there. There you go, a sparkly bracelet. Hmm, that's kind of nice. What am I going to do with that? Put it off to the side here. Here's some things I don't like as much. Simply because they are hard to clean. This is, how do you, well this must be a headband. This must be a headband because, well, I guess if you had a small enough head you could get it over your head, but it would then be too floppy for a choker. So, Okay, so you wear your spark. No, they don't go together. Never mind. This is nice Aurora Borealis coating on these, but they're just plastic lightweight. So there's a headband for someone who has uh, lovely hair and can wear a headband. Put that off to the side. And here's another one. This one's not as sparkly, but it's a nice gray color. Just needs a wash. It's still pretty stretchy. Interesting. I don't know what else you could do with what else would you do with these besides put them in your hair? Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. <gasps> oh, this is something nice. Look at this. This is a stone. It's in a really inexpensive setting. I was going to say cheap, but I thought I should be more diplomatic. Look at that. This is what I would say is a piece of unikite. U-N-A-K-I-T-E. Um, a really nice stone in a very lightweight setting. Very pretty. I'd be tempted to put it in something a little more substantial. Um, what's wrong with it here? Oh, okay. So we're missing a ring for this to go into, for the clasp to clasp into. But that is a very nice little stone. Whoa. Okay, that's going in my pile of goodies to keep. I don't know where that pile is right now, but I'll figure it out. This funny thing here, this, uh, you know, the problem with neck uh, jewelry made out of yarn and cloth is it's hard to clean. I mean, this looks clean. It's... It looks like it's machine made out of a, like it's kind of like that braiding you would put on your furniture. Um, it's nice twists and everything, but 
I've never seen anybody wear something like that. Have you? I guess if... I, I, I'm just at a loss for words. Sorry, I don't know what to say about that besides the fact that it's not easy to clean. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, these are earrings. I'm going, wait a minute. These are light bulbs. They're heavy like light bulbs. Why, why would they be in a jewelry jar? But then I saw that they actually have some slightly mangled ear wires on them. And uh, they're meant to be earrings. So I don't know if those are plastic. They actually feel like real light bulbs that have had a ring soldered to the top. Believe me, that's what they feel like. Uh, these are, these ear wires have seen better days, so maybe they're plastic, but they have the weight of real light bulbs. Okay, there's the Christmas jewelry. Maybe this video will be up in time for Christmas. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know what to do. There's so many, I can't make piles because I've, I've run out of ideas of what to make the piles about. Now this is interesting. This is a memory wire bracelet. I've never seen one done like this with these really cool plastic Aurora Borealis beads and, a, and graduated size. It looks much more sparkly. Well, maybe I could put it on this hand, on these fingers. Looks more sparkly under the natural light than it does really on my hand. So that would be fun. It it does it has this you can sort of see there, there's more of the sparkle, the red, the pink and the green, and it is really quite quite delightful. Alright, we'll put it there with the bling. The bling. What is this? Oh uh, I just lost something on the floor. This is something broken. Look, something broke off of there and something broke off there and there. So this is just like dangerous right now. It's very scratchy. Um, you know, you could file it down and wire wrap some beads on it or something. I wonder if I find if I'll find anything in the jar that goes with it. Right now, I'm going to put it in the pile of metal stuff for future repurposing. I'm going to pause the video and go find the thing I dropped on the floor. So the thing that fell on the floor is quite interesting. It's it's plastic, but it's got this spot at the top, almost where you'd think the post would come out if this were part of an earring. So I'm not sure what its purpose is. I'll uh, put it off to the side till we can figure something like that out. I did notice there was a pair of earrings and these are made out of bits of shell and they're kind of interesting in that one side of the shell is a matte color color and the inside of the shell is nice and shiny. So as they dangle you get a variety of shiny and matte. And here's the pair. Except this one's missing. Here's the pair except that it's missing the uh, ear wire from up near the top there somewhere. So, sort of a pair, almost a pair, in the repair pile. Here are some seed beads. These are nice shiny brown. They look a lot uh, darker on the camera than they do in real. Oh, this one is, okay, so, <laughs> I was gonna say they look a lot darker on the camera than they do in real life, and then there's one strand of black in there. So go figure. So here's a strand of black beads and these are 
sort of medium brown shiny beads with it. So a lot of seed beads need a clean. They're a little grimy feeling, but the um, the clasp is in great shape, and it's a spring ring clasp. So I don't know if that's new, old, what it is. Um, very wearable. There's no way that I need that many seed beads, but I like the black beads. I would be tempted to steal the black beads out of there. I could just cut it off, and I could donate the rest of the beads to something else. Don't tell anybody. I might just do that. Um, let's put it in the shiny pile. And, oh, I see uh, there's some... I'm beginning to accumulate enough earrings for to start pairing things up. I'm just looking to see, do you see an end on this? So we've got some brass chain, station with plastic beads, more brass chain, uh, sort of space beads, beads close together. Um, so I'm not sure if what you call the top, the bottom, the middle of this. Um, yeah, this is kind of strange. Because where do you, which part do you put around your neck? If you put this heavy, this heavy chain would tend to go down. Then you'd end up with, if you kind of put them side by side, then you end up with a couple of beads right at the back of your neck. And the same on the other side. So I'm conflicted as to how you would really wear this. I guess you would put it on and you'd figure out how it was most comfortable. I hate when there's like just two beads like that so I, just sitting at the back of my neck because they always feel like they're not in the right spot. But And these are also close together. And then this is a, this might be better but then if to have that at the back of your neck you're going to not really see those beads. So I don't know who designed this or what they had in mind. Uh, maybe you could use it for a couple curtain tie backs. Just take it apart. Oh, jewelry. Who designs it? Who makes these decisions? I just got something caught on my table. This is too bad. That bead's all kind of beat up. That's nice glass or plastic. Oh, this is, uh, how is this supposed to work? Oh, okay. It was together the right way. So, lobster claw clasp and two strands of these beads that I think they're all plastic. These almost feel like they could be glass, these little shiny ones with the little speckles in them. Like this one, I think you can see the speckles a lot better. But I still think it's uh, plastic. Um, nice variety here. I just don't... I think these ones with these funny dots on them will look like they're damaged. But I guess they're not. They're consistently like that. So... Again, another necklace in great shape. This might have sold better individually at the store rather than thrown in a jewelry jar. But uh, who knows? If if I didn't have so much nice jewelry, I would probably keep this to wear once or twice and then give it away. So I'll put it off to the side. Oh, here's another matching piece. This is really weird. So this piece is like a choker version of this double one. So there's the long one like that and then here's the choker one. Slightly bigger beads and things. It's really Try to see if this is glass. Let me hit some glass. 
I don't think so. I think it's plastic. But this is nice. This is nice. It's got some bigger beads in it. I like. I love beads like this. This sort of filigree kind of thing. Huh. Wonder if there's earrings in the in the jar too. So there. I'll have to put those two pieces together so that keep them as one. Now this is interesting. Alrighty. Here's one half of a necklace. And I see this piece that is the center of a necklace. A really beautiful set of rhinestones and the, it's just become unclipped right about there. I don't see, hmm, what joined them. So those are just bits and pieces. All right, I'm gonna give it a few more handful or one more handful and we'll try to be done ooh this I saw this looks like some kind of um, polymer and it's really cool it see how it's embedded with little mirrors little uh, spirals of wire and seed beads someone had to sit and stick those all in there um, and then maybe varnish it with glue or whatever, or put some kind of a paste on top of it. Interesting. It uh, it makes uh, sparkles on my my board as well. Oh, I'll have to. It's kind of cracked in a few spots. It's not marked. There's a crack inside there, and then there's a crack I saw on the outside. You know what? I think this is going to go in the kids' play jewelry. Um, all right, what's this? This looks like a vintage necklace. I'm not sure what the time period was. Was it in the 70s when we had uh, avocado green and almond and what was that yellow? Harvest gold appliances. Is that where, when brown plastic necklaces were all the thing too? This is brown. It looks almost black. It looks chocolate. This looks like semi-sweet or, or milk chocolate in real. Um, wearable, needs a wash. I'll donate it away. Here's a gray necklace. These are the good old molded in place beads, the kind that you see in really inexpensive plastic and shiny colors for Mardi Gras. This is uh, gray. Um, there's some sh rough spots. Oh, that's not a clasp, that's just a, a mangled bead. Um, so again, yeah, beads to donate. And then this is interesting. It actually feels like leather. These are acrylic faux amber. They got little inclusions in them to make you think of amber, but they're not amber. And they're just knotted together on this leather, which has already broken at one point. So, wonder what you could reuse these for. You got two side, there might be the small ones for earrings and the center one for with some nice brown uh, beads for a necklace. I guess it's sort of restyling things, but definitely the leathers uh, well worn or thin enough that it's um, already broken once and so not really suitable in the long term for a necklace. And it's time to stop. Uh, so far, this is my favorite thing and it's a beautiful stone.
in an inexpensive setting. I don't know if I can zoom in on it and show you how beautiful it really is. Is it going to focus? There we go. Look at how beautiful that stone is. Yeah. Bye for now. Hope you're having a great day. We'll see you later. Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes.